Welcome back, folks. You know, we've been getting tons of rain here in the South lately. And today, I just got a new gift recently, and I'm ready to try these out. Some brand new boots. Wasn't even expecting any boots, but how can you turn down free gifts, especially when they're from family? Huge shout out to my pop. If anyone that really knows what's really going on behind the scenes, VLB been fishing these dirty old things to get through all of the high water levels around the ponds lately. So let's open this box, man. Let's take a look at these things. They just feel great. So we're whipping it out the package already. Just look like some of your standard water boots. They're hard to cover your shins. Make sure you don't get bitten by snakes. As everyone knows in the South, especially in Florida, we have moccasins everywhere. And as I started as a kid fishing in bushes, and these would have came in handy a long, long time ago. We do not have to be afraid. Let's whip this up out of here. Let's get these bad boys on. Oh, yeah, got those puppies on. I think they feel absolutely just freaking nice. So we got those bad boys on. We're feeling good. We're feeling super pumped. We're hitting a couple of puns today, man. We're just going to keep it simple. Take, like, two rods, and let's just cast around and catch us a five-pounder. Let's get this stuff back in the truck. Definitely do not want to litter, so let's get this back in the truck, and we're getting out to that shit, man. Let's go. So we ended up leaving out the truck with three rods. What you guys feeling? I have a lip I have a swim jig. And I also have a soft plastic jerk bait or a flute, whatever you would love to call it. Which one should I start out with? Well, we have a slight drizzle on the water, still early low light conditions. Temps are definitely above 55, so I don't know. I'm thinking that lipless might get it done. Get out there, lipless. Tear them up. Make me cry. Yeah, today we are serious. We got the boots. We're covering water. We throwing moving baits for sure to start the day. These bass are going to have to prove me wrong and show me they won't otherwise. Ooh, well, first spot, no bites, but I usually bring a few rods. I usually alternate between all three rods to see which bait the bass really want. They haven't hit the lipless crankbait yet, but the goal of today is a pun hop and to cover water. So we're not slowing down, we're just going to keep moving. God, see that? We have a new freaking family of the lake. We have an otter out here now. That is just tons of fun. Now we have more competition for the bass that we're trying to catch. Not to mention there are already other gators and such. This is a stormwater trash collecting retention pond here in Florida. There's always going to be tons of trash. We tried to pick it up once before, but there's nothing you can do. Like all of the trash literally flows to this retention pond and we're going to let the county workers take care of that. We're going to get the fish. As much as I hate to say, it's almost kind of like I hate to even walk through all of this mud and crap with these brand new boots on. And I'm really loving the fact that they're insulated. Unlike my last pair of boots, I was out here really, really struggling in the cold water tubes with those boots. But this just makes life great. Focus on the finer things in life, such as fishing and catching this big one. So I'm going to try to turn the real handle super duper slow. Maybe these bass aren't quite active. I mean, the water temps may not quite be over 55. I know air temps will be above 55 for today, but it's still early. We have had some freezing nights the past couple of nights in the 30s, so you really just never know what the bass are feeling currently. Well, due to all of the grass, I just keep catching every freaking cast. It's like grass salad after grass salad. I'm about to go home and make me a meal. Let's go ahead and switch it up a bit. Let's throw some weedless lures, such as the swim jig. One of my favorites. Oh, Mr. Swim Jig. Let's get at this. Oh, it's been a minute. Oh, yes, it's happening. Oh, that's a thump. Oh, that's actually a fish. I thought that was a thump. That's actually a fish. Yes, sir. Swim jig bite coming back active? You say swim bite back coming back active during the cold months in Florida? I wouldn't believe it. Come here. You a solid. You a nice little fish. Come here. Come here. Hey, oh, it's a dead fish down here below me. What the heck? What the heck? It's a dead bluegill down here below me. But of course, without further ado, BLB snatches the first lips of the day. Let's go. Got the swim jig in this stroke. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Like I said, it was too much grass. Lipless crankbait. Lipless crankbait is one of my favorites. It, there was just too much grass. So I had to throw some grass candy, like the swim jig. And we get us a dandy. Yo, I really just can't believe. Let me get this bass some water. It just makes me kind of sad. Because maybe this was another fisherman's doing. Or it could have. It's very simply been mother nature. Oh my gosh. This fish been dead for quite some time. So we're throwing, we're throwing swim jigs in. 
Here's a dead bluegill. I did not realize it was dead for this long, but super slimy. I'm not sure there's mother nature doing another um another angler. Just never know what you hate to see it. It's unfortunate. So the water does feel kind of cold. We got our first bass. Caught him on the swim jig. We're throwing the litmus crank bait with just a little too much grass. Fishing around maybe three to five foot of water. Not entirely sure. I know it's kind of like a little ledge or a little short drop off here. We're just a nice Florida fish. We're looking for a five pounder, but you can't beat it. Man, let's get them back in. Thank you a lot, buddy. Swimped out so delicately. So I'm about to get really upset. You mean to tell me, even though with all of these crazy wild temperature changes between the 30s, 50s, 60s, 20s, all of that good stuff here in Florida, you mean to tell me them bass will still eat a freaking moving swim jig? This whole time been throwing drop shot, weightless flutes, another finesse bass. Are you freaking serious? You know what that means? The hunt is on. Still raining a bit in Florida. But man, I'm telling you, we're not slowing down. We're going to hunt them down. We're looking for a five pounder. Man, let's go. That time, I just cast it straight on out. Let's try that again. Reeling at a decent, like at a decent slow to medium pace. No speed turn of the helm like I usually do. That bass just gave me a solid little thump. He was on with the way that thump felt. I almost thought that the bass probably maybe just knocked on his tail just because it seen it coming. But he actually hit it and not slacking my line because I didn't even feel him swimming away with it. Do I look crazy? Would you guys be out here fishing in the rain if this was you? I had a guy even come to me. He was like, What are you doing? Are you filming yourself? I'm like, Yes. And he just looked a little confused, a little surprised. And I may look a little funny out here fishing in the rain, but I mean, there are other people walking in the rain too. So I mean, hey, they out here just like me. So I just wanna, I'm just curious, am I foolish? Would you guys fish in the rain too? I mean, it's only just a little sprinkle. It's not like it's throwing down and lightning or anything. Drop it in the comments, man, let me know. I just think maybe some people think it's weird. It looks like I'm talking to myself, but you guys understand because I'm really talking to you. Anyone that fishes understand what's really going on here. Fancy meeting you here. You guys followed me to the next lake. Caught one at the first spot. Never a bad feeling at all to get the line wet, to get a tug, you know. But we just searching for a little more meat on the bones. We're looking for that big, healthy, juicy girl. So we made it to the next spot. The water's deeper. There's more grass and there's more area to cover. So we got to get to it, man. I catch you there. So we legit brought out the same technique, the same exact bait, rod, reel, all of that good stuff. The only difference is we brought one spare lipless and one spare jig. Both of them, which are heavier than what we have tied on. We currently have a quarter ounce tied on for the swim jig and like a three eighths ounce lipless. We also have a half ounce lipless and a three eighths ounce swim jig, just in case we got to get a little deeper because this water is quite deep compared to the last location. So we just got to kind of figure out where they're at and going to dial them in. That's all. Can actually smell fish over here. That's crazy. Couldn't smell them at the last spot, but they are here. I'm actually kind of glad the water levels are up. Makes it a bit tougher to find a bass, but they can't see us because usually the water is super clear and it's just shallow enough they can come and creep up on you. But now with all the flooded grass and bushes, it's like they're right out there past that, but they can't just look directly at us in our eyes. When the water is shallow and them bass are coming looking at you in that clear water, staring at you eye to eye contact, like they're ready to make love. Like they already know what time it is and they just don't even bite. The smell of fish is just freaking absurd right now. Like it's super strong. I don't know where it's coming from. The wind is blowing towards us. So it has to be coming from somewhere out there. We just have to really dial in and figure them out. But the water's so deep, it could be anywhere. There's water flowing under this bridge. Could even be a bass in over here somewhere, who knows? Fish, fish, fish. I just called it. That's a fish right there. Fish, fish, fish. Solid fish, solid fish, solid fish. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get them up. Look at them, I'm not sure if you guys can see that over there. That's a solid fish. We gotta get over there. How are we going to get over there? That's the question. I gotta get this fish. This fish is up under this bridge. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on, buddy. We got us one. We got us a goat. I said we wanted us a goat. We might have got it. 
Had to get out the bridge. GoPro mode activated. I knew there was a bad somewhere over here. Oh, he have a red mouth. He probably been eating crawl. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Got us a long Florida bass, a dark colored bass. He's definitely been living in that grass around here. His lips are quite red at the top. I think they've been feeding on a lot of crawfish here. But we're just throwing a swim jig, man. Caught us like a two pounder and some change. He's super long, super skinny. I don't know what's up with the little fella, but he was hungry. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, buddy, for the first bite at the new spot. Didn't take as long, but now you're back off. And I hope you make it to become a five pounder. I know you're long and skinny, but you definitely have the frame for it. She's off. Let's go. I just gotta say, I'm actually quite surprised that we caught that bass. It was within like the first two pitches under this bridge. And it's just one of those spots that I haven't been to in a long time. I haven't fished this spot not one time this whole entire year. Can you believe it? This spot is home to a lot of big bass, but it's super pressured. If you've been following me for a while, you know I caught some nice sized bass out of here, but it just feels great to be able to come back out here to be able to reenact that and catch another one. But I never catch any kind of bass around the bridge. This is where all the big girls be lurking. But like I said, with a high water level, and then we have overcast, the water's not quite as clear. It's hard for those clear water bass to be able to look up and see us fishing for them. So I just pitched out that bass smoked as soon as it hit the water. And like I said, it's just so surreal to be able to come to a spot you haven't fished all year. It's actually probably been about half a year since I've been out here. And to be able to come out here, like I said, we're keeping it simple today, throwing nothing but moving baits, and it pays off. Man, let's get it. Let's get us one more. Let's see how many more we can catch. Let's go. Is there a fish up behind this grass? There's only one way to find out. And I'm in the tree. Good Lord, help me. Please, help me, please. So we stuck true with the plan, brought two baits. Quarter out swim jig is what was working at first. But now, due to the water being so super freaking deep today, we're going to switch it up and see maybe we can catch some of those bass that aren't quite up shallow. This is a 3 8 jig that's right next to it. We're going to tie this one up. We have another lipless crankbait, but this one is a half ounce instead of a 3 8 ounce. So we're going to try to reach some of those deeper grass lines and see if some of those bass are just holding just a little bit deeper where we can't reach them. And we're going to keep at it and we're trying to see if we can get us a five pounder. Stay tuned. That's a fish or grass. I think that's a fish. Oh yeah, that's a fish. That's a fish. Let's go. We just had to switch it up. We had to get to some deeper water with the lipless man. Let's go. Come here. He's getting me in the grass. That's where they're hiding at. And all of the help. Just grass they can find. If I can just get him. I, he's wrapped around. There it is. Get him out of there. Stay on. Stay on. He's fighting so aggressively. <laughs> Just an, another beautiful Florida fish. Let's get it. Let's go. That's number three. Just throwing lipless crankbaits, reaching some of those deeper grass lines, and we're catching those beautiful Florida bass. Let's go. Lipless crankbaits for Florida bass living in them deep grass lines. Let's get them back in there. Oof. He was all super fast. <laughs> Let's go. This the bait that did the trick. Throwing a bluegill imitator, half ounce lipless. And we're just bumming as far as we freaking can. It's probably about 10 feet out there in the middle. Just letting it sink down to the deeper grass lines before we even begin our retreat. Then we begin a steady, slow retreat. May pump the reel handle every three, four turns just to kind of trigger that reaction. And there go one right there. It just hit the water. I barely even had a chance to work the bait. And he's freaking taking off with it. Let's go. That's a good one. Oh, he's not super big. He's skinned across the top. Let them come in, come in nice and easy. We just bringing them in. Let's go. And that's, a, that's our four bass of the day. We out there reaching those deeper grass lines, boys and girls. They all just have this freaking red. They all have this red candy coat paint job at the top of their lips. I think they're eating some kind of crawfish of some sort. They definitely eating something hard. 
and we're throwing little crank baits and spear catching them. That's insane. Get those pliers up for this baby. Get us hooked up. These little ones are the ones you really have to worry about. Whew, got them on hook though. Nice and easy, girl. We're not going to talk too much. We got this fish on the hook. We're going to get them released. We got to get us some more. I think they're scooped up out there. Thank you, little buddy. Got it in my lip. <laughs> but that's a good feeling, man. Let's go. Yep. I definitely think we figured it out. They're out there in the middle. Somewhere between maybe 7 to 10 feet deep. That cast was a bad cast. I'm so busy talking. But we have us like four bass now. That's a great feeling. That's all I can say. We got to get us some more. The blood is popping, boys and girls. Let's go. Sometimes keeping it simple is just so freaking important. A lot of times I come to the lake with three, maybe four or five rods. But I love everything at the house today except for two rods. Brought two of my favorite baits. Some lipless crank baits and some swim jigs. Two baits that can cover water very well and they work great in grass, especially in the south. Didn't overthink it, put the pieces to the puzzle together, just get out here and just go to cast. There's only one way to find out if the fish are biting, and that is by getting to the lake. Fish right at the bank. Right by the bank. I was just getting ready to make another cast. And he just scooped it off. That's what I like right there. Mm. They fight so good. They have so much energy once hooked. They preserve all of their energy when they just chilling, waiting on food. And it's like once you hook them, they just freaking let you have it. Maybe the, the chunky is of the day. I'm not sure. You see what's in his mouth. Got that little this crank bait with a little bit of grass. Perfect recipe for success, baby. I think it's bass number five, guys. Tell me, what are you throwing this time of the year? Drop in the comments. Let me know, what would you throw in deep water with grass lines? Or if you have structures such as rock, let me know what you guys are throwing. And BLV, throwing lipless crank baits around grass lines, and we getting it done. Let's go. There is honestly nothing I can even say. I'm just so, I'm just so appreciative, and I'm really thankful. I think that's bass number five, and just got to count your blessings to be able to get out here and enjoy this. Man, let's go. Oof, it's been a grind. Two spots, five bass, two rods, two lures. Just keep it simple. The best way to get it done, stop overthinking it, man. Just get your behind off the couch. Get to that lake. Throw a line in the water. That's the only way to find out if the fish are biting. What are you going to throw? It doesn't matter, man. Just get out there. Have you a good time. Get active. <clears throat> it... Uh, <laughs> always stay off the couch a bad day of fishing beats a good day at work and of course until next time keep those lines tight stay <laughs> cut two spots five bass two rods how can you beat that we threw two of our confident baits today nothing but moving baits searching for a big one we caught a couple of solid fish we even found a small school haven't caught that five pounder quite yet but hey man a bad day of fishing always beats a great day at work and today was not bad at all. I just feel super blessed, extremely blessed to be able to get out here. Stop overthinking things, man. Just keep it simple. Grab your ride. Get out the couch. Get to the lake and get that line wet. And until next time, keep those lines tight. Peace. Stay safe. We're out.